Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Watson Town Alliance Church Senior Reaction Night. We have a great night for you, and we are very proud of our seniors. Let's welcome them here this evening. Can we hear from you in your cars? All right, let's hear from our seniors one by one. First, we have Mr. Denver Beach, escorted by parents Dennis and Melissa. Denver is a graduate of Warrior Run High School, and his future plans include going into the workforce on his family's farm, the turkey and the dairy business. His birthday is April 14th, and he enjoys hunting, fishing, and farming. Denver's prayer request this evening will be that he, along with his fellow seniors, will keep God close by their sides as they move into the new chapter of their lives. Congratulations, Denver. Next, we have Melanie Brown. Melanie is escorted by her mother, Annette. Melanie is also a graduate of Warrior Run High School. Her future plans include attending Penn College for radiology. Her likes include any kind of candy, granola bars, chips, and she also likes to decorate with things like candles, pillows, plants, and blankets. Sports, especially soccer, are also important to her. Congratulations, Melanie. And now, Now we have a two for one, Tyler Pick and Marissa Pick, escorted by their parents, Brian and Melinda. Tyler graduated from Warrior Run and plans to attend Lebanon Valley College with a double major in actuarial science and mathematics. He likes sports, 1,000 piece puzzles, not 500 apparently, 1,000 and above, and granola bars. Congratulations, Tyler. Marissa is looking to attend Wilkes College, where she will major in nursing and continue her softball career. She likes chocolate, baking, and animals. Congratulations, Marissa. Next, we have Rachel Yawn, escorted by her parents, Mike and Marianne. Rachel is a 2020 grad of Warrior Run, she graduated valedictorian. She plans to attend Marywood University to pursue a major in medical laboratory science and to play field hockey. She enjoys music, chocolate, and cookies. Rachel asks for prayer for a smooth transition to college amidst coronavirus concerns. Congratulations, Rachel. Next week, Lauren. Lauren is a June 2020 grad of Warrior Run and plans to attend Mansfield University to major in nutrition and dietetics. She will also continue playing softball while she's there. Lauren enjoys Dunkin' Donuts, cookies, protein snacks, spearmint gum, reading, and softball. Prayer requests for Lauren include courage, strength, and acceptance. Congratulations, Lauren. Next, we have Hayden Woland. Hayden plans to pursue a degree in construction management. He is escorted today by his parents, Bill and Jennifer. Hayden likes sports spending time with friends and family, Mexican food, and cookies. Man, cookies has come up a lot in this group. I know what you guys were doing for the last 18 months, right? Her requests, uh, prayer requests would be to follow the plans that God has for his life. Amen. Congratulations, Hayden.
Next we have Ben Stein. Ben is being escorted by his mother, Carrie. Ben is graduating from homeschooling. Uh, he graduated in May. His future plan include attending Luzerne Community, uh, County Community College to make movies for YouTube. He likes Jesus, games, Legos, movies, cake, cookies, you guessed it, and ducks. Uh, prayer requests for Ben include college, his grandmother's health, as well as friends and family. And last but certainly, certainly not least, our only college grad tonight, Mr. Andy Pick, escorted by his parents, Scott and Christine. He's a 2020 grad of Penn College with a degree in civil engineering technology. Wow. Things that, uh, that Andy enjoys are basketball, hiking, and gaming. A prayer request that Andy has is uh, a job prospect. He is looking to hear back from a company. Let's hear it for our seniors. Make it loud in here. Jokingly, uh, when I was meeting the grads down there, I mentioned that uh, I was going to speak for about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, I wasn't joking. I'm going to really actually do that. No. Uh, it occurred to me as I was thinking about the comments tonight that um, I don't remember a single talk to graduates in the 42 years that I've been in ministry, and some of them I've given. So I want to I want to make it memorable for you tonight, and I want to start with this particular reference from First. Uh, don't you know you are not your own you were bought with a price Gl glorify God with your body now, I'm going to read it from the message and it says it simply this way don't you see that you cannot live however you please squandering what God paid so much for God owns the whole works since that's the case your purpose is to let people see God through your life so this evening, I want to share with you three things that are important for remembering to keep that as your primary purpose. When I was six years old, I was interviewed by, I guess it was a speech therapist. They interviewed all the students to see where they were and their progress. And she asked me, I can still remember it clearly. She asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, without hesitating, I want to be a fireman. And uh, my dad, we came from a little town, uh, Richland town, 800 people. My dad was the mayor, and I had the, the bonus, being the mayor's son, to get into the fire department and see the fire trucks there. And I was all excited about that. And uh, despite that fact, having gotten two fire trucks during Christmas time one year, that's all I ever did. And today, let's say over 10 years later, I, okay, somebody got that. Um, I never became a fireman because even though that was my passion or my goal, I never made any choices. I never did anything to keep going in that direction. And so this evening, what I want to share with you is a way that you can determine if you want to glorify God with your life. And it doesn't matter what vocation you choose. That's the overarching purpose that we should have when we belong to Christ to bring glory to him. And that simply means that when people meet us, they're able to see a picture of Jesus Christ in our lives and be drawn to him. If that's your goal, I want to share with you these three things. And when you think back on this evening, I want you to remember these three words. The first is friends. The second is food, which is, seems to be a theme that's developed through all of your, your likes. And the final one is fire. Okay? So if somebody asks you, what, what did you hear that night? Remember those three words. Friends, food, and fire. What will impact your lives over the next years? It's those three things. Now, what do I mean by that? What you will become in these next few years is largely dependent on who you will hang with. Do you understand that? I don't mean your acquaintances. I mean the people that you bring into your life as close friends, the ones that you share your struggles with, the ones that you share your problems and your joys with. Those people, those friends, will determine to a large degree how you will be shaped over these next years. 
So it's crucially important that you choose people that love the Lord and that push you in the right direction. If you choose otherwise, it will pull you in the wrong direction. I want to tell you a story about the two Billies. When I went off to college, uh, I, w I went to Georgia, and I, I was from, uh, from Pennsylvania. And when I got down there, I felt really alone. I didn't know v very many people at all. And there was a guy from Mississippi. His name was Billy. Is this going out over the Internet? It is. Okay. His name was Billy. We won't mention the last name. And uh, for some reason or another, Billy took a liking to me. And he, um, he adopted me as his friend, and he told me quickly that the Wrangler jeans that I was wearing, which I had grown up on, Wrangler jeans were the thing to wear, were not cool in Georgia or in the South. And so he introduced me to Levi jeans. And not just any Levi jeans. They were boot-cut Levi jeans, and you let the bottom out, and it frayed. And when you wore those Levi's, they were super cool. And I, I just kind of idolized him. He was a good athlete. But there was something about Billy that was not right. He didn't love the Lord with all of his heart. And after our friendship began to develop, he began to suggest doing certain things and moving in certain directions. And I, I wanted to be his friend. I was, I was lonely, but I realized if I'm going to follow Christ, if I'm going to move in that direction, this Billy is not the one for me. So I want to introduce a second Billy. I can't mention his last name because we're going to go on the Internet. But the second Billy was somebody that had been the pastor's son of the pastor that led me to the Lord when I was six years old. And his father had been called away from our church and we were reunited in college. We hadn't seen each other for years and years. And he saw what was happening with my friendship with his first Billy. And he said, Scott, come hang with me. Now, here's the thing about the second Billy. He loved the Lord with all of his heart. And he pushed me. He encouraged me. Sometimes he even read the riot act to me about moving in the direction of Christ. And that made all the difference when I abandoned that first friendship and I went with the second Billy. And that guy, I could call him right now. He's on speed dial on my phone. We've been best friends all these years that he was in my wedding. And I call him every week. We talk together. And he still encourages me in my faith. Graduates. Choose wisely the people that are your best friends because your friends will largely shape who you become in these future years. Find people that love the Lord. Find people that are dedicated to that purpose of glorifying him in all that they do. Having fun. I, I can remember Billy told my daughters one time, your dad and I in college had endless fun with no regrets. Did you hear that? Endless fun. And we were crazy. I, I'm, I can't go into it. I'd probably be in trouble if I told you some of the things. But no regrets for what we did because Christ was first in our life. Choose wisely. Your will impact you. The second thing that will impact you is your food. And as we've established already, food is very important to you. But I'm not talking about cookies or cake or uh, McDonald's, that comes to mind right now, but uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what you eat for your soul. What will you take in you for your spiritual health? You see, you can eat a lot of things. You have a choice to eat a lot of things, spiritually speaking, in your life. In fact, you can consume a lot of things that have nothing to do with your spiritual life, and yet they pull you away from your com commitment to the Lord. It's no secret, and I've mentioned it a couple times already, that I love McDonald's. I love McDonald's. There's nothing on their menu that I do not like. There's certain things that I love. I went almost nine weeks without a McDonald's during the COVID situation, and it was a joyous day when I pulled through that drive through and ordered that Big Mac meal. It was just incredible. But there's something you need to know about McDonald's, and as your pastor, I need to share this with you. If you make it just a McDonald's menu for the rest of your life, you're going to die. It's not good for you. And if you just eat the junk food of this world, you're going to die. Your faith will die. Because you see, what junk food does is it fills you up on things that are not healthy, and it robs you of your appetite for good food. What do I mean by good food? Over these next few weeks and these next, next few months, if you haven't already done so, determine what it is that helps you grow spiritually. Find an author, find a podcast, find a speaker, find a musician 
whose music really ministers to your heart, that draws you upward and inward into your relationship with Jesus Christ, and then plan your diet. Did you hear what I said? Plan your diet. Make it a daily occurrence to feast on the food that will grow you spiritually. Your friendships will have a large concern in this as well because th your friends will will always be pushing you in that direction to eat the right things because what you are you are what you eat you realize that that means spiritually you are what you eat as well so friends and food and the final word is fire this morning in the message that i gave i talked about the storm the storms of life and how god is in the storms and i I hate to share this with you, but I, in a sense, I don't. I need to share this with you. In the next few years and in your life, you will be called by God to go through some traumatic, difficult things. It's just a matter of life. Scripture tells us, in this world, you will have trouble. And how you respond in the fire, in the storm, makes all the difference. When you know that God is with you through that storm, when you know that God has not forsaken you, but he is walking with you and he will use that. He will redeem the pain of that fire in your life to make you a stronger person and to increase your testimony and glorify him. As you cling to him, he will meet you in the, in the fire. It says when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. So dear folks, tonight, not an hour and a half, just briefly, what are the three things? The three things that will impact and influence the rest of your life are the friends that you choose over these next few years. The food, spiritually speaking, that you make your constant diet. And finally, when you find yourself in the fire, cling to the one who paid everything for you. Draw close to him and he will draw close to you. Food, friends, and fire, they will determine who you become. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Scott. Some great words of wisdom for you. Friends, food, and fire. I thought you said you didn't become a fireman. Yeah. We're going to enter into a time of prayer over our seniors, and I encourage everyone to even extend your hand if you're comfortable, comfortable with that. And parents, pray over your children and and let's dedicate them and the rest of their lives to the Lord. They have great years ahead of them. You, seniors, have great years ahead of you. And God can use you for great and mighty things. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening thanking you for the pleasure of knowing these young men and women. Men and women with limitless potential to impact the world for your glory. And Lord, we pray that that's exactly what we would see come out of this class of 2020. God, I pray that their hearts would be stirred toward you. I pray that daily you would draw them to yourself, that they would feast on the goodness of your word, and that they would dwell in your presence on a daily basis. Anoint them, Father, as they look to go out into the world and do the various things. Anoint them, Father God, to be salt and light. Lord, bring the people into their lives that are going to challenge them and, and push them closer to you. Lord, for those of them who are in relationships, for their future spouses, minister to them, Father. Teach them to love and respect the way that you have called us to do. Father, for those who are traveling out of the area, would you provide for them a local body of believers that will love on them, that will give them a place that they can call home. And Lord, I pray that you will, above all else, draw close to them as they draw close to you. Anoint them, go before them, and may we hear wonderful testimonies of what you have done through them. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. This concludes the service part of our evening. And so we're gonna have our seniors march out and then we're gonna open, open the alleyways, if you will, for a parade. And so we're gonna ask that you travel this way, out around the truck, down around.
Mrs. Judy Bach has a, has a basket where you can drop any cards or gifts that you have for our seniors and go around as many times as you'd like, make as much noise as you'd like. We'd love to hear from you and we hope that you have a great evening.